Another day, another dollar on this beautiful Monday in the world we call truck driver. Got some people out here been asking me, hey Andrew, man, how you get the direct contract, Andrew? Hey Andrew, who you leased on to, Andrew? Hey Andrew, man, help us out, Andrew. Help us with that paperwork. Is that right? Sometimes Andrew need help too. Don't you see I'm figuring things out on my own right now? Andrew be needing help too. A lot of people gave up on this world we call truck driver. Ain't no money in it no more. Rates a dollar mile, DAT this, TQL that. I'm probably the only person I know right now that find truck driving worth it. Like I said, in the last seven days, I netted $5,000, so seems very worth it to me. This week is looking like it's going to be the same, but it's only Monday. Now, direct contracts. So I posted, if you saw it, because I only left it off about 12 hours in the community post. I posted a master service agreement. That's the MSA for one of my oil field contracts that you guessed it. I don't have. Yeah, that's right. I don't have. That's right. Yeah, I posted something I don't got. Why would I post something that I do got? I got it, but I don't got it, okay? Let me explain. I got the contract, but that particular contract required me to have a Texas DOT number. Well, I didn't want to go and get a Texas DOT number, so I didn't fulfill or go through with signing another contract and all that stuff. Well, actually, I did sign a contract. I just didn't get the requirements that they wanted which was the only thing I didn't have was his Texas DOT number. So I put that up as an example so you guys can see what my MSA looks like. And it's not a carrier broker agreement. It's not something that you sign like when you sign up for TQL or some type of um, package you sign when you sign up to run broker freight for another trucking company or something like that. That's not what it is. But the question you guys really want to know is, hey, Andrew, will I make more money if I got my own direct contract well the answer more than likely for a lot of you is going to be no you're not going to make any more money than if you was leased on to a carrier let me explain okay i got the contract right i got a contract i got a lot of contracts here and now you know sometimes we own them sometimes we not how it works is i get a hundred percent Factor and take they cut 3%, 4%, 5%, just depends on who you factor with. Let's just say, let's go with the high number, let's just say 5%, right? So out of 100%, the whole entire carrier is at 95%. Well, I'm at 95% because I'm the owner, right? Now, I was doing a 90 10 split, which means if you was leased on me, you got 90%, I kept 10 out of that 10%, that 5% when it went to factoring. You know what happened to the other 5%? Nah, it didn't go in my pocket. Nah, nah, mm -mm. It went towards payroll expenses because I had to payroll everybody. You know, everybody got paid at a full service payroll department. Uh, it goes to claims. It goes to, um, what else it goes to? Oh, letting people borrow money because you got truck drivers that no matter how many days they run a cash truck they'll never have any money you know to afford the operation so sometimes you have to let them borrow money um it's, it's not that much money but that's when you're doing a 90 10 split it's not that much money now if you're doing 80 20 maybe it's a little bit more money well it's gonna be a little bit more money but uh what you try to figure out is are you gonna make more money okay so i get the real rates you know and i see the difference between you know what the carriers get and you know, if you lease on to carry the rates that they give you, you know, some of them give you the real rates, some of them give you, you know, fake rates. That's just how it worked. You know, the carrier got to make money now. You probably thinking, Andrew, why do they give fake rates? Because if they paying you 90 10 and the factory company is taking five and there's only 5% left over for us, if, if you gross $10,000 and I only get 5% as the carrier, that's not that much money. So how do I get more money? Okay, well... I get you by, hey man, you want uh, you want lease on man? That means you need my insurance. I go to Progressive A, got another one over here. How much you gonna charge me? Hey, eight hundred a month, cool. Uh, I need three hundred a week, three six nine twelve. 
That's the extra four hundred dollars a month for me, right there off your insurance, right there. Because you don't want to, you know, you lease on them, so you got to pay. They didn't actually went up. I think now they three fifty, four hundred is what y'all paying for insurance. So you are kind of going up depending on where you work at. The next way to get money from you is the fuel card. Just give you a fuel card with no discount. Uh, I use mud flap, so let's just say, you know, mud flap. I get about forty cents off the gallon. You get five hundred gallons. And I'm getting uh, 40 cent, keeping 40 cent per gallon that you get. Well, if I don't give you the discount, that's more money I'm collecting. You got to get fuel to run that truck. So I just, you know, collect all that money, collect all that money. Just That's just a spare way to get money. Another way to get money is like some of the oil field carriers do. They just give you fake rates. So let's just say, for example, um, let's say... For 100 miles, let's do drive-in world. 100 miles, you guys like $2 a mile, so 100 miles pay $200. Okay, well, let's just say that's what I got from TQL. Well, I tell you, hey, man, 100 miles pay $100. That means I keep $100 right off the top, and then since it's a 90-10 split, uh, I keep 10% of that $100 that you're going to get, but 5% of that is going to go to factory, so... Right there, I get five dollars off the hundred dollars. Okay, so that's another way. And then, of course, you got some of these carriers that got real creative and they just came up with deductions. You know, look at the settlements. You guys know what I'm talking about. They just usually get paying a bunch of deductions. I don't even know what they are, but you guys are paying them. You just look at the settlement, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so in that aspect, you're not going to make any more money if you just simply find the right carrier that's giving you that 90 10 split. Um, sometimes 85, 15 is, is good also, okay? Now, on the carrier side, where the money is going to be made is adding people onto your authority under the direct contract. So, you add on the second truck, 90-10 split, I get 5% of whatever he grows, plus the fuel, discount off the fuel, plus the insurance, plus whatever else the Dutchess I come up with, plus the fake rate sheet, so boom. I had a third guy on. I do the same thing. Then the fourth guy, then the fifth guy, then the sixth guy. Well, if I'm like I am now, still driving a truck while I'm running a motor carrier, let's just say all our freight came off DAT low ball, for example. Well, now I can get on YouTube and say things like, hey, if I, if you know your numbers, if you know your numbers, you can survive, you know, off the two low boys at a dollar, yeah, a dollar fifty dollar a mile. You know how I can survive at a dollar a mile off DAT low board? Because I'm sitting over here collecting a bunch of extra income off a bunch of drivers that they don't know about. I'm just collecting, it's very hard to fail when I'm just collecting free money. So yeah, I'm running my truck low. I'm surviving. But I got all this backup income on the side to keep me and my equipment rolling. Now, the drivers may not survive. They may only be here about two months before we have to start looking for another driver. That's a different situation right there. But So, um, another thing is, when it comes to these MSA contracts, it takes a lot of money to grow. So, for example, you got an oil field contract. You need the truck and trailer. Somebody got out of truck, somebody got out of trailer. When you lease people on, they need the whole equipment. One thing you're gonna find about people in truck driving, they don't wanna own now piece of equipment. So what ends up happening is uh for the ones that, you know, finally got away from the lease program, they had their own truck. They won't have no trailer, and if they're doing pneumatic, they won't have a blower in the trailer. Those type of people they kinda hard to find. So more than likely you're gonna have to get them a trailer. Huh. <laughs> Go to the dealership, take a look at the prices. Not to finance it. Now, the good thing is, on your motor carrier, you got your own contract. If you finance a trailer from the dealership and you have owner operators pull it, you just charge them a trailer note. They gonna they pay for it, just like any other carrier do. Prime meat, all them, they pay for it. So if you go to the dealership, they say, hey man, this freaking uh, 2015 drive van used. You know, it runs you $20,000, for example. Okay, well, let's just charge uh, Charlie over your $400 a week. You know, dealership man told me it's only 150 a week or 100 a week. Probably 100 a week. Uh, but we're going to charge him 400 a week. Well, not only is he paying the trailer off for you, that's more money going along with the whole equation I just explained. So, 
It's another way to get money off a driver. Um, oh, if he need to lease a truck. But this is more advanced. This is more once you got a bunch of trucks going, you can take, you can go get your own lease trucks out the dealership. Hey, you go get that brand new truck from Freightliner. Say you finance it, $150,000 truck. They want freaking, uh, let's say, $1,800 a month. Okay, well, buddy over here, $800 a week. Or uh, $1,000 a week. Let's do 1000 a week. That's $4,000. So you owe Freightliner 1800 a month. And this driver over here paying you 4000 a month. Not only is the truck note getting paid, well, now you got even more money into the whole equation coming in. So now you collecting money off his truck note because he want to lease a truck. He, he got to lease a trailer. He needs your fuel car. He needs your insurance. He need everything at this point. He just handicapped. He need it all. And you got it for him. Yeah, you got it for him. He need it all. But he has to drive that truck. Yeah, he, you need him pulling freight for the whole thing to work. That's that, that, That's what you need him pulling freight. That's why if you got an MSA, you're going to have that steady freight coming in until you know, everything go falling down. Then you need a backup plan. Okay, so, so for the ones that's asking me about the direct contract, you're not missing out on anything. You just just stay leased on to a carrier, do a 90-10 split. You're not missing out on any money whatsoever. At least maybe like an ounce. Maybe an ounce of money. But Andrew, I want to grow a carrier. Then you need to start stacking money because it's a lot of... It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. The number one problem I see right here where I'm at, can't acquire no trailers. Nobody got trailers. No, none of my competition. They don't got trailers. I don't even know how to get these trailers. So, you know, I don't know what dealerships sell the trailers. I don't know nothing. I, well, I, me personally, I probably wouldn't buy no trailer like this that I'm hollering right now for the ones that know what I'm hollering. I said this years ago. These type of trailers, I don't think I, I, I wouldn't buy it. I rent a trailer like this. That's about it right there. I pay some pipping on this trailer right here. I damn sure won't own it because. You fuck around by this trailer right here and go to sell it, zero dollars. You woo. You may just have to give it over to Goodwill. <laughs> Ain't no driver gonna buy this trailer off for you. That's all I'm just that's, that's what I'm trying to say. But what else you guys be asking? Uh, oh, y'all want an update on the blue truck? I ain't winning picked it up yet obviously I'm still right here working so that's your update when I get time I'll go get it um, blue truck just chilling just chilling waiting for me to go pick it up whenever I can get down there to go pick it up uh, do I plan to put a driver in the blue truck I do I do plan to put a driver in the blue truck plan to put a driver in the classic too and uh, there's two other trucks that I'm filling too it's just hard to find trailers right now for the trucks but in total, I would say I'm looking to put drivers in four trucks right now. Well, not right now, but you know, in a, you know, hopefully in the course of a month or two, four trucks to fill. Okay, so you know, but like I said, right now I can't even find one trailer for the blue truck. So 